All right, promise this is just the, or this will be the, the last video I have on mitosis, so the third part here. I want to talk a little bit about <clears throat> cell cycle control and how that relates to cancer. So if you look at this image of the cell cycle, this is showing you these red dots or what are known as checkpoints. And these are points at which the cell actually checks itself to make sure everything has gone correctly. The most important of these is this one. It's called the G1S checkpoint. And what happens is the cell will check to make sure everything was good after cytokinesis and that the cell is actually doing the job it's supposed to do. So it has all its parts, it has all the chromosomes it need, needs. And if cells fail these checkpoints, um, they can actually undergo a process called apoptosis or programmed cell death. So this one is the, the one of the more important ones. If a cell fails here, it can go undergo this apoptosis process. There's also one here at the G, it's called the G2M checkpoint, and that's to make sure that the DNA was copied correctly. And then there is one at the end of mitosis called the spindle checkpoint, and that happens right before cytokinesis. So there are these checkpoints that are built in. Now, some cells will also go into this thing called G0. Now, G0 is often drawn sort of this way, where we draw G0 as kind of this cycle here, outside of G1. G0, some cells go into G0. Uh, in G0, what's happening is the cell will actually go into a state of non-dividing. So the cell stops dividing and it never divides again. Um, in us, there's two kinds of cells that do this, neurons and muscle cells. So they don't ever divide and they stay stuck in G0. Now I wanted to talk about cells that, that do go through these checkpoints and what happens. So <clears throat> bear with me, this is related to cell signaling and I'm not gonna ask you to interpret this on a test or anything, but I wanted to show you sort of how this works. So we have this, um, this GPCR protein, so this receptor, this responds to a protein called growth factor. So when you sprinkle a cell with growth, growth factor, it activates this receptor and this G protein triggers a whole bunch of stuff to happen in the cell. One of the things that it triggers is it activates this protein called RAS, R-A-S. RAS sets up this series of events where it phosphorylates a bunch of these kinases and eventually it turns on this protein called RB and that causes protein synthesis to occur and it causes the cell to divide. So this is where cell signaling, in, cell signaling interacts with mitosis. In fact, it activates a protein called MAP or mitogen activated protein. That's the thing that helps turn on mitosis. Now, the reason I wanted to talk about that is because I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about cancer, how that relates to cell division. So usually when you think of cancer, we often think of tumors and tumors are related to cancer, although not all cancers have tumors. And usually we talk about tumors being either benign or malignant. Now, if you have to have a tumor, you don't want one, but if you have to have one, you want the benign tumor because that's a tumor that's not cancer. You've had some irregular cell division, but the cells are not cancerous yet. Cancers that are malignant, or if you have a malignant tumor, that means the cancer cells are actually migrating from the original site of the cancer to other tissues in that organism. That's this process called metastasis. Now, Part of the reason this happens is because of how cells, cell division is controlled. Cell division is controlled by two sets of genes. You have these genes that are called tumor suppressor genes, and they kind of do what they sound like. They basically act like breaks to cell division. So you activate the tumor suppressor genes, it stops the process of mitosis. And then you have these other genes called proto-oncogenes. Now proto means to come before, Onco means cancer. Proto-oncogenes are not cancer genes. What they do is they're like the accelerator pedal for cell division. So you turn those genes on, that activates cell division. So tumor suppressor genes are like the brake, proto-oncogenes are like the gas. Now, if you have a mutation in a proto-oncogene, it can become an oncogene. In that case, that is a gene that causes cancer. And that would be a bit like if you took your accelerator and duct taped it down to the floor of the car. 
that accelerator would just be turned on always. So no matter what you did, that car would be revving. Now you can do the same thing with tumor suppressor genes. You can break them too. That would be like someone coming, coming and cutting off the brake pedal in your car. Then you wouldn't be able to stop. So these genes are both really important. And I'll show you some more in just a second. What happens with tumors though is this. So one of the really important genes is this gene called P53. Uh, the P53 P gene makes a protein that's involved in DNA repair. And so this P53 gene helps to repair damage to the DNA or if I make a mistake during copying of the DNA. So what can happen is this, if you have a normal P53 protein, this repair enzyme kicks in um, and that P53 gene helps repair the DNA, but if the DNA can't be repaired, the cell will undergo apoptosis, it'll get destroyed. If you have a mutated version of this P53 gene, then you don't do the DNA repair and you don't lose any cells that have damaged DNA. And so what can happen is you get a mutation. Now that mutation may not cause cancer, but you get a mutation. And as that cell divides and continues to divide, it accumulates mutations again and again and again, until eventually you break enough of these genes, either proto-oncogenes or tumor suppressor genes, and the cell becomes cancerous. So uh, just to give you an example of some of these, so I mentioned P53. P53 is a tumor suppressor gene. I mentioned this RB gene. By the way, it's named after retinoblastoma, which is a type of cancer in the eye. The RB gene also is a tumor suppressor gene. And then you have these proto-oncogenes. I mentioned the RAS protein. That comes from a proto-oncogene. So RAS activates cell division. Uh, RB protein and P53 protein, they suppress cell division. So you have on switches and off switches. So if you get mutations in these genes that code for these proteins, you may have problems controlling either turning off cell division uh, or it may just keep on. Now, when we talk about tumors, we often talk about tumors being malignant. Malignant means cancerous. It means the tumors can migrate. Um, most cells don't move around on their own inside an organism. But when you have a tumor, and we're using breast uh, tumors as an example here, uh, we use breast cancer because it's the most common form of cancer in females. Although I have to mention that about 1% of males also get breast cancer. Um, very small percentage, but it's not zero. Um, uh, it's actually a really good example to use because of we know a lot about how it spreads. So if you have a tumor uh, in the breast tissue, and the breast tissue is glandular tissue, and that's usually where the tumors form, um, that tumor can grow. Now, it will probably start out as a benign tumor, and those often get removed if they get discovered, because if they're left, they can develop into a malignant tumor. And what's gonna happen is those cells will invade the tissues around them, so they'll show that they're malignant. Uh, then what they'll do is they'll break off, and the cancer cells will actually get into the circulatory system, or this other system called the lymph system, which drains fluids from the tissues back to the circulatory system, and those cancer cells will spread, and if they set up shop in another tissue, they'll actually form tumors in that tissue. So that's where the malignancy comes in. All right, we've gotten through cell division. Good job, everyone.